2023. Wow. If you've been joining us this month, then you know that we have been covering the sermon series entitled Making Room. And each week we have discussed different people that made room in God's word. And so this week we are going to discuss the Magi and how the Magi made room. I want to remind us of our anchor verse, which is found in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, and it reads, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Join me as we read God's word together. If you'll stand for the reading of God's word, it's found in Matthew chapter 2. We're going to read 12 verses. You all bear, bear with me as we read God's word, okay? And it reads, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will will shepherd my people Israel. Verse 7, Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. For this day, Lord, that you have brought us through this year, Lord. There have been ups and downs, Lord. God, there have been prayers prayed, Lord, and answered by you, God. Sometimes, Lord, with the answer we expected, and other times, Lord, with an answer that we didn't expect. But you are still good. Lord, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word today, God. May we focus on you. God, block the distractions. Block them, Lord. Bless our hearts and our minds to focus on you, to receive your word, God. And Lord, I pray that your word falls on the fertile soil of our hearts, God that we are not just hearers of your word, but doers of your word. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. You are welcome here. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Many of us will spend time today reflecting on what will soon be this past year of 2023. If you are like me, then you may feel like this year has flown by incredibly fast. In fact, 
ever since I turned the ripe age of 21, I feel like time has quickly moved ahead. For some of us, 2023 may have been filled with what feels like both wins and losses, ups and downs, definitely some downs. Maybe you experienced a life change, maybe marriage, divorce, a new job, loss of a job, birth of, a, birth of children, loss of a child, or an unfavorable health diagnosis. Or maybe you started the beginning of 2023 with a list of goals to accomplish, and now you realize that mm, maybe only one of those goals was accomplished, or maybe none at all. Or maybe halfway through the year, you forgot all the goals that you, that you set for the beginning of the year because it's just been that kind of year. As you reflect back over the year, perhaps your plans were not realized, but some other unexpected blessings came your way. In fact, I'm sure that if I polled every single person listening right now, the results would show that what we planned for in the beginning of this year did not quite work out the way we expected. For some of us, it worked out way better. For others, it may feel like it just didn't quite measure up. And still for others, it was just completely disappointing. We learn as we live each day that life is filled with things that we don't expect to happen. But what is our response to life's surprises? What do we do with the disappointment that we experience from others as well as ourselves? What is our response when what we ask God for has not yet come to pass? And inevitably, we must wait. What is our response when we receive a no from God? For many of us, we try and keep control of as much as we think we can. Our emotions, our behaviors, and those that are looked upon as most successful are those who appear to have full control. Because if we maintain control, then we can try and contain those unexpected things that happen. Or we try to maintain control because we know we can't prevent those unexpected occurrences. This endless Hit of trying to have control is a result of fear. The fear of not knowing, not being able to prepare, and not knowing what to do. Do we have any current students in the room? Any current students? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Any current, any current students? Okay. Some of us, most of us have been a student at some times in our life, right? I saw your hand. Some of us have been a student at some point in our lives, and we have had that nightmare where our teacher gives us an unexpected test. Anyone ever had that nightmare? Anyone ever had that dream? We are unprepared. This is so unexpected, and we are doomed to fail. Now, if you never cared about school, listen, and you skated through, and you just went, ate breakfast, lunch, did your work, and, and that was it, then you may not have experienced this dream. But for those of us who tried to excel in school, then this nightmare filled us with anxiety and fear, and it was always something just kind of in the back of our heads. Life is filled with unexpectedness. In fact, as we look forward to 2024, there will be some unexpected occurrences Life situations, both good and some bad. But we serve a God that already knows what 2024 will bring. We serve a God that knows exactly what will take place. The twists and the turns, the joyous moments, the crying sessions, the kids not listening to us, the social media fights. Who will win the Super Bowl? Who will be president? God already knows. And today I want to remind us that as believers, we are to live in a state of constant expectation of God fulfilling his word. 
If we trust that God is faithful, an unfailing promise keeper, and that his word is everlasting, then we should carry hope that God is always working out his plan. And our daily walk should include an attitude of expectancy. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That's found in Matthew chapter 25, chapter 24, excuse me. As we look at the text today, we are probably envisioning the three wise men visiting the baby Jesus, giving gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In fact, you are probably singing to yourself, or you may be tired of singing this at this point, but some of you may be singing to yourself right now. We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We travel afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. O oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Most of us have heard the story of the birth of Jesus with some combined details that form this picture in our mind. Luke tells us in chapter 2 that there were shepherds, living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared and announces that the Savior has been born. And a company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The shepherds then say to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. According to Luke's account, shepherds find Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus lying in the manger. However, in Matthew's account, Jesus had already been born in Bethlehem. Jesus was not an infant that had just been born, but was probably between the age of more along like 6 to 18 months. When Magi travel from the east, which was more than likely ancient Arabia or Persia, and they travel to Jerusalem and ask, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? Now, there is no doubt expressed in that question. They didn't ask if the king of the Jews had been born or how can this be? We have here non-Jewish pagan astronomers searching for the king of the Jews. The Pharisees weren't searching for the king of the Jews. The scribes weren't searching for the king of the Jews, the elders and the priests and those members of the religious elite, they weren't searching for the king of the Jews. Instead, we have non-Jewish pagan astronomers searching for the king of the Jews. Listen, God is known for using the least expected. We see over and over again in God's word how he uses the least expected. He used Ruth, the Moabitess, the least expected. He used David, the youngest of his family, a little shepherd boy, to be king. He used Abram, who came from a pagan family, to be the father of all nations, the least expected. He used stuttering, murderous Moses to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go and to lead them out of slavery into freedom, the least expected. Oh, God is known for using the least expected. 
This is also another example that God is the God of all nations. God is the God of all nations. God isn't limited, constricted, or bound by anything or anyone. God can use anybody. Anybody. You, me, God can use anybody. The prophet Isaiah prophesied in chapter 60, verse 3, nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. We have the nations traveling afar, led by a star to worship King Jesus. Now, there are three things that I want us to notice in the text, and that is searching for Jesus, an expectancy of Jesus, and worship of Jesus. While we take a look at these observations, I want us to think about what our response is to the King of Kings. Are we searching for Jesus? Are we expectant of Jesus? And do we seek to worship Jesus? Then let's look at the responses that we have here in this text. We have the response of King Herod, which is found in verse 3. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed. Now, just to share some background of King Herod, in addition to him being king, he was also a murderer. In fact, he had murdered his wife. He had murdered his mother-in-law. It goes, it's more. He had murdered three of his sons, all in effort to retain his control, his power, and his position. And those were just his family members, right? Not to mention the numerous other lives that he killed. He murdered court officers and others. Herod is disturbed and fearful. That is his response. He doesn't know what to expect from this king of the Jews. And he's fearful of losing his position. Now, in that same verse, it also says the response of Jerusalem. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. They were disturbed, non-expectant. Were they unsure of the prophecy or worried about Herod's response? Were they worried about how that would impact them? They knew what type of king Herod was. But in addition to him being a murderer, some people thought he was a great king. He'd rebuilt the temple. He did a lot of great things according to them. So their response is that they were disturbed. Now, the Jews knew the prophecy that was spoken by Micah in chapter 5, verse 2 and 4. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Verse 4, he will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. In Numbers, written by Moses in chapter 24, verse 17, a star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. The Jewish people knew of the prophecy of the coming king, but it had been over 400 years since this prophecy of Micah. A lot of time has passed, but we serve a God that always fulfills his word. We serve a God that always fulfills his word. 
The wise men go to Jerusalem asking the people of God, where is the king of the Jews? They are searching for the king of the Jews. But God's chosen people weren't searching. Now let's look at the response of the wise men who were more than three. Okay, guys, there, there were more than three. I know that's what we've been told and... We sing it and we, more than likely, it was more of a group of these wise men. So Herod calls together all the chief priests and teachers of the law, and he asks them, where is the Messiah to be born? And they reply with the prophecy spoken by Micah. So Herod, being strategic, having a goal of killing the king of the Jews so as to avoid losing his position, finds out from the Magi the exact time that the star had appeared, and he sends them to Bethlehem and tells the Magi to search for the king of the Jews so that he can worship also. Well, we know that he's not planning to worship, right? We know that he's planning to kill the king of the Jews so that he can keep his position keep his power, keep his control. But isn't it interesting that here we have Herod, who does not believe in God, who is not a follower, right? But he believes the prophecy. He believes God's word. We find in verse 10, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed, the wise men. That was their response, joy. Not a disturbance, not a worry, not an anxiety, but joy. They see King Jesus with his mother Mary, and they did what they sought out to do. They bowed down and worship him. They gifted our Savior Jesus, the King of the Jews, with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They made room for Jesus. These pagan, non-Jewish astronomers who sought out on this long journey, being led by a star, led by an expectancy and joy when they saw King Jesus. Their response, joy. We know that God uses the least expected people. The Magi are the least expected to search for Jesus, to be expectant of Jesus, and to worship Jesus. In this second chapter of Matthew, and so was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet is repeated three times. Because God always fulfills his word. Our Savior Jesus fulfills every word spoken by God. So I ask you all today, on December 31st, 2023, what is our response to the Savior of the world? As we, by God's grace, enter this new year of 2024, what is our response? We must stand on the promises of God with an attitude of expectancy. What promises of God are you standing on today and walking into the new year by God's grace, trusting him for? The promise that he won't leave you? The promise that his love is unfailing? 
the promise that his yoke is easy and his burden is light, the promise of forgiveness of all of our sins, the promise that he does not treat us as our sins deserve, the promise that as far as east is from the west, so far as he removed our sin, the promise to be strong and courageous, to not be afraid, for God will be with us wherever we go. The promise of trusting in the Lord with all of our heart and not leaning on our own understanding, but in all our ways submitting to him and he will make our path straight. Are we going to walk into this new year by God's grace and strength, trusting his promise that all things work together for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. That the plans that you set, the goals that you made, may have failed. Most of them fail. But God never fails. Trusting God's plan over our own, our own feeble attempts. Seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness and trusting that all things will be added unto us. Surrendering our need for control, surrendering our fears and anxieties and worries because guess what? God already knows. He already knows. He already knows what 2024 holds. If the Lord sees fit for us to see 2024, will we make room for him? Jesus stands at the door knocking. Will we open the door and let Jesus in? If you have not already accepted Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you today not to walk into another year without making room for Jesus. Not to walk into another year without being led by the good shepherd. Not to walk into another year trusting in your job, trusting in your family, trusting in, in your bank account, trusting in the stock market, trusting in your education, trusting in your degree, Trusting in your friends, trusting in drugs, trusting in alcohol. I encourage you this morning that if God sees fit for us to walk into 2024, and by his grace we will, that we will let Jesus in. That we will let him in. That we will make room and as he knocks at the door of our hearts, that we will let him in. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. How many of us have heard that so far? Probably multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. Yep, yep, we've all heard it multiple times. Some of us grow tired of hearing it sometimes. We think, oh, Christmas music. Christmas is over. December 31st, Suzanne, why are you still singing a Christmas song? Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart Prepare him room. May our hearts prepare him room. Because, friends, greater has come. Greater has come. And greater will come again. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for your word, Lord. Your word, Lord, which goes forth and does not return void. 
God, I thank you that you, Lord, are a promise keeper. Lord, I thank you, God, that you never fail. God, I thank you that you are sovereign, Lord, that you already know what 2024 holds. You already know, Lord. Lord, may we trust in you today and forever. God, may we trust you with our lives. God, may we be dependent on you, rooted, God, in your love. Help us this morning, God, that we will make the daily decision to make room for you, God, that we will be led by your Holy Spirit, seeking, Lord, to be holy and righteous, reflecting to others of your love, of your holiness, of your righteousness. Lord, I pray that we let go. Lord, that we let go of the things of the past, that we let go, God, of those things that we view as disappointments of this past year. God, that we let go of all of the things of the past. And Lord, that we trust in you as we look ahead to what you are doing, Lord. For you are doing something new. God, we thank you for Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are God with us. That if it had not been, Lord, for your love to send your son here, to die on the cross for our sins, to take on the wrath that we deserve on himself without ever mumbling a word. God, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for you are the ultimate sacrifice. We thank you, God, that you give us life more abundantly, God, than what we expect. Lord, we thank you. Be with us, God, by your grace as we walk into this new year. Bless us, God, to take hold of your hands as you lead us, God, as you prepare us, God, as you equip us, God. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.